The Honourable Member for Souris Moose Mountain. Mr. Speaker, February is Heart Month in Canada, and the Heart and Stroke Foundation is running their annual fundraising campaign. Approximately 750,000 Canadians face a daily struggle with heart failure. And last November, following a heart attack, I became one of them. I encourage everyone listening to learn and regularly review the signs and symptoms of a cardiac episode. Swift action and diagnosis could be a difference between life and death. I personally thought my symptoms were minimal, but I got checked out anyway, and thank goodness I did. I must recognize my doctors of Estvan, Dr. Sheikh and Dr. Choi, for their quick action and continued care. I would like to thank the staff of the Regina General Hospital Cardiac Care Unit, including the doctors, nursing staff, and technicians for your commitment to providing quality care for your patients. I would also like to specifically mention my cardiologist, Dr. Lavoie, and my angioplasty specialist, Dr. Booker. These incredible doctors are the reason why I am still here speaking to you today, and I cannot thank them enough. And finally, to those who say the politicians don't have a heart, I now have surgical proof I do. The Honourable Member for Davenport. Mr. Speaker, it's my pleasure to rise in this House today on an issue that's important to the residents of my riding of Davenport, child care. Located in the downtown west part of Toronto, Davenport is still largely a working class to middle class riding, with many households struggling to make ends meet. Since the Government of Canada announced its ambition for a $10 a day early learning and childcare plan across the country, the federal government has signed agreements with every single province and territory except for Ontario. Indeed, in some provinces, families are seeing a reduction of overall childcare fees of 20% or more. At a time when the Canadian economy is struggling with higher costs largely due to global supply chain, every additional dollar makes a big difference. Our federal government has been and is willing, ready and able to sign a deal with Ontario. On behalf of the residents of Davenport, I'm asking the province of Ontario to not waste any more time and step up to sign the child care agreement that will deliver much needed savings for the hardworking families of Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for dufferin Caledon. Mr. Speaker, COVID-19 has been absolutely devastating on Canadians. During the last election, the Prime Minister ran an extremely divisive campaign. And since that election, I've heard from so many Canadians and people in my riding. People who lost their jobs due to vaccine mandates. People who had to have their children vaccinated to play hockey. They're hurt. They're exhausted. They deserve better. Conservatives have been calling for a plan, a plan to stop dividing Canadians, a plan to lift restrictions and get us back to normal. Mr. Speaker, I am so proud that the member for Louis Hébert has shown so much leadership, recognizing the devastating consequences of lockdowns and the lack of a plan to move forward. If only the Prime Minister had the courage and the leadership shown by the member for Louis Hébert. Unfortunately, our country and Canadians will continue to suffer from his lack of leadership and his divisive attitude. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Forest Lawn. Mr. Speaker, I applaud the member for Louis Hibert's courage who stood up to this tone-deaf Prime Minister, calling on his government to stop politicizing the pandemic and stop dividing Canadians. Those speaking out against the mandates and the restrictions are not white supremacists or extremists like the Prime Minister tries to label. They are everyday Canadians who just want a clear path forward out of this pandemic so they can get on with their lives. Canadians' lives, businesses and mental health have all been devastated and our Conservative team has been asking for this clear path forward for the last year. True leadership unites people, no matter their views. But this Prime Minister demonizes anyone who doesn't agree with his ideologies, calling people racist, even though he did blackface and kicked strong ethnic women out of his caucus who stood up against his corruption. It's time for this Prime Minister to stop politicizing the pandemic and start listening to Canadians who have suffered enough. Canadians need hope, they need leadership, and they need action now for a path forward out of the mandates and restrictions. We all owe it to Canadians to keep our land united, strong, and free. The Honourable Member 